Welcome everyone to the first episode of DOS Time. Now, DOS Time is a brand new series of videos I'm going to be doing featuring DOS games pretty much from about 1980 to 1995, 96 era of video gaming. Now, I grew up, of course, with console gaming. It's what I, I pretty much have mastered over the years. I played almost just about any every game available for the NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. But I always get requests for doing blind runs of games, and unfortunately, there's not a ton of console games that I honestly haven't played at some point or another. However, there is plenty of old PC and DOS games that I never got a chance to play the first time around. I never really got a PC until about 95, 96, and the only time before that I was able to play games was at school. So I got to play like Oregon Trail, Amazon Trail, and Number Munchers, and many of the educational games. And then later on in 95, 96, I played the big games like Warcraft, uh, Doom, Wolfenstein, Escape from Monkey Island, Maniac Mansion. But I didn't get a chance to play a lot of these other classic games. Some well-known, some not really that well-known. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be exploring all these types of games in this new series of videos. Now these are actually going to be broken up into parts. More of a regularly segmented type uh, of episodes. And I think this will also help uh, get more content up uh, on a regular basis in between my playthroughs. So anyway guys, I chose for the first episode of this... Um, it was actually the, I was already thinking about doing this, and then I posted a little bit and asked a couple people, you know, what should, what kind of DOS game should I go, and of course this was the very first one that popped up, and I wasn't surprised, uh, and that is the Commander Keen series. Now, Commander Keen had six full episodes from it and Apogee, and I think had some other side stuff and, and other things like that, including, of course, Billy Blaze, the main character of the series, making a small appearance in Doom and in, in like the very, you know, the ultimate violent Doom with having different characters of him being destroyed. Uh, you could shoot him with rocket launchers and such. But Commander Keen was, I think, was one of the first big successes for Apogee and id Software. And Apogee made so many amazing DOS games, some of which I've gotten to play a little bit of here and there, and then a lot I never was able to get the chance to play. And I figured it was a good chance that, and a good opportunity to start this whole series with a great game in Commander Keen. And this is Commander Keen Episode 1. And we're going to be starting this one off. We're going to start with a story first. Now, unfortunately with DOSBox, you have to slow it down a little bit on some of the games uh, because it won't quite work well. And you won't be able to scroll properly or even play the game properly. Some games are worse offenders than, than others. I'll do my best to... Uh, there we go, I think that's a little bit better. So anyway, here's our main storyline for uh, Commander Keen. This is Invasion of the Vorticons, and this is broken up into three separate episodes, and we're starting with episode one. Now, Billy Blaze is an eight-year-old boy genius. He ends up creating a spaceship out of a whole bunch of random parts in his house. And while his babysitter is sleeping and his uh, parents are away, he ends up donning his brother's football helmet and becomes Commander Keen, the defender of Earth. In his ship, he ends up traveling first off to Mars, and this is episode one, Marooned on Mars. Basically, aliens have uh, found out about the boy, and he ends up taking parts of his ship and stealing them, so he needs to go and grab all the pieces of the parts of his ship and get home before his parents end up getting home. You can read a little bit more of that. And it tells you then, breaks down what exactly has been stolen here. You have the joystick from your brother's video game, the car, a car battery, a vacuum cleaner, and Everclear from your dad's liquor cabinet. What a great item for a kid to have. Uh, they have taken the pieces to the far reaches of Mars and are guarding them. You must find the members of the Vorticon outpost and wrest the parts back from their wicked clawed hands. You then actually have a little bit, apparently, of information on Mars itself. What? That's actually kind of funny that they actually include some, I guess, edu semi-educational things about Mars here. I guess we could read that at, at some point. If someone wants to really read some of this stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll slowly scroll by a little bit less. And then, before you go, is, okay, the task is before you, go get him Commander Keen. And then, it tells you, don't miss the other episodes. Now, this was a shareware game, like many other Apogee and, and DOS games at the time. And basically, they gave you a, one part of the game. And then, if you liked it, you could buy the full version directly from them in order to get 
the rest of the episodes unlocked for you. So here we go with Commander Keen, Episode 1. Now, like I said, I'm go this is all blind to me. I, I start up each game, and I'm going to test them just to make sure that the game works, and maybe a little bit handle the basic controls of whatever game I'm playing. But for the most part, I'm never, I've never played these games before. I've never beaten them, definitely. So there's going to be a lot of deaths and a lot of mistakes and stuff like that. Now, yes, we are going to save before each uh, area that we travel to and see how that goes so we don't run out of stuff. Um, you can press the space bar once inside of a level to see how many lives you have left, how, many, how much your score is, the ship parts that you've been able to collect, how many shots we have left with our ray gun, if we have the pogo stick, and any key cards that we've collected up to this point. Now, Commander Keen in its core is a platforming game. It's actually a very fun platforming game. It's very colorful and very stylized graphics from the time of, of DOS games. You would see many other Apogee and, and style games like this uh, with the same kind of color palette and stuff like that. You kind of have the moon physics, of course, being on Mars. It kind of makes sense and being in space in general for the entire series. Um... But it does take a little bit to get used to, that's for darn sure. Now you can jump on some enemies in the game, and then there's going to be others that you're going to be unable to jump on. A lot of the items that you find scattered throughout the level are pretty much just items placed there for bonus points, such as books in that lower right corner, which can be a little bit dangerous to actually try to get to uh, because of the piranha-type plants that are set up. So I'll really focus on collecting some of the other stuff that's laying about. Now, I'm also going to do my best in these videos to get through the game in still a relatively good fashion, but since I'm not looking at FAQs, really, or anything like that, it may take some time to get through some of them. So, while some people, of course, can blaze through this game, I'm sure, in just a matter of moments, it may take us a little while. Now, there's a little bonus area after collecting the or getting through the first area, and this is as far as I've gotten in the game. I didn't play any more than really this is you find this beacon on top, but unfortunately you can't read the galactic alphabet. So you're unable to get anything from this. I'm not sure if there's something later on that we can read it, or, you know, whatever it goes on with that. Okay, before entering the next area, let's... Yes, I want to overwrite. There we go. Okay, and this is kind of, I guess, level number two here. Now this level is, um... You know, I, I actually did open this one up briefly because I saw this door over here. So that introduced that I knew I needed key cards for the first time in the game. So, But I never found the key card, so I don't know where it is yet. I didn't really get a chance to look for it. So now everything is brand new to me for the very first time. Let's explore. Oh, wow, well, that worked well. Climb back up. Now, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned yet that I do apologize, there's not a whole lot of music or anything in the game, it's just sound effects, so that's something you, you have to get a little bit used to, that's for sure. There seems to be a teddy bear up in that corner, but I don't think I'll be able to get to that without the pogo stick. Also, have to be careful, you have a really long jump, but you still gotta be careful that you don't jump too, too far, or you end up jumping on top of one of the, uh, the many enemies throughout the level. You actually have to press the control and alt buttons together in order to actually fire uh, the ray gun. Now, of course, this, uh, this stuff you can't actually go through. Okay, that's good. We can get up here. Nah, it doesn't look like you can do a running jump very well in this game. So we have to go up this way, which is fine. There's a new type of enemy. I'm not sure exactly what I can do to him or not. Oh, there's the yellow key card. It will locate that for the first time. I'd like to hold a ton of items along the way here. And I, of course, I jump down and get killed by whatever the hell that was. I guess it's a Vorticon. Unfortunately, though, when you lose a life, you do start at the, uh, the bottom of the level. I don't think I keep... Nah, I don't, unfortunately, keep any of the items that I gathered, so... I'm not sure if I even keep any of the score I got. That's, uh... I'll 
I'll try to get back to where I was quickly. That's gonna be one thing that I'll get used to. And in later episodes, if it becomes too much of a hassle, I can always edit and, and different things. Okay, apparently you cannot jump on that robot. That's good to know. Okay, back to the yellow card. this guy again. Don't really want to mess with- Oh, God, he can jump high. Okay. I have any gun left? Okay, that didn't do anything. Nope. I don't know. Okay, I guess I gotta go all the way over and then take the upper path in order to get past that guy. There's no seemingly other way to get past him. I'm not even sure if there's a reason to get past him, but... I have a high suspicion there may be because, well, he seems like a boss type guy. Watch out for his butt this time. Ah, oh, there's where the red key card goes. Well, that's great. I wish I would have known that already. So, time to backtrack. Let's try to get past this guy quickly without him finding us. And now we gotta head downwards because the red, the uh, yellow key that we actually do have, you can open up the door below. So be very careful here while falling that I don't accidentally land on an enemy I can't actually hurt. All the way back down to the bottom. There we go. Okay, now there's the red card. Now I'm going to have a feeling I can't really do anything with that guy, so I'm not going to mess with him. We're just going to bypass him and then work our way back up to the location of the red door, which we have to do more platforming and all that. And we'll stop over here and grab some Pepsi. Too bad it's not Crystal Pepsi. It would be better. Okay, that worked out really well, and I fell right on a goddamn plant. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I... Oh, that sucks. God, does that suck. But I figure, uh, yeah, whatever. We'll continue. Try to get back up there again. Yay, I'm stupid and try to do that one jump and it's just massive cost me here. Watch out for the freaking robot. There we go. Yellow card. Now we don't need the... through the level pretty quickly that time, so we didn't get backtracked too far, really. Oh, God, and I jumped right into him. Three hits. And I hit the start menu. That's awesome. What, did someone look it up? That's fine. I, You guys can, relatively, you see something, say something. This isn't formal play. Huh? That didn't take long. Anyway, Tails and Sweetie Gamer are in the room, no surprise. So, there. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully this time I don't fail. Hopefully I can get at least, I don't know, a part of the armor before I <laughs> end my first part. Oh god, I went down to his chamber. That was a bad idea. <laughs> Not doing that. But I can drop down here because it's just that guy. Oh god, he's after me. Now, I mean, I know now that you can instantly, once the door starts to open, you can instantly travel through it, which I didn't know last time. So I just jumped and I went right through the door right on top of him. But now we know. And knowing is half the battle. There we go. Lots of jumping, lots of jumping, lots of jumping. Well, the robot. 
robots. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. They look like the kind that would fire at me. That thing is scary, man. Ah, oh, Christ. Okay, we're gonna get you to travel over here. Boom, got it. I beat the level! Yay! Finally! I will, I'm just getting over here. Okay. Okay, there's another one. There's mini levels. I don't know if I should do this first. Is there any point to these mini levels? Oh, there's the pogo stick. Never mind. That is actually kind of worth it. So weird. You gotta, like, hit, like, four buttons just to do a save. You gotta hit, like... F5, then the number of slot you want, then yes. <laughs> okay, another yellow key card is needed here. We do have the battery though, so we've got one part part of the ship. Okay, that was awesome. Okay, you can stop getting hit by those guys now. Well I know, but you gotta use that to jump up to higher places. I haven't found a place I can jump up to yet. When I do, I will. Oh, there's the LP. That was pretty easy. And harmless. There we go. There's more ray gun. We'll take that, though. like going that way. Damn it! <laughs> I had a feeling. Okay, they give you a little bit of leniency with the ceiling here. The one wall I did earlier, like, it didn't give me really any leniency as far as ceiling was concerned. Pizza. What, those? Oh, those guys? I don't know. Maybe. I was actually trying to be conservative with my ammo. I don't know why, but I was. And plus, the other guys just said take three shots, so I didn't want to. I'm not going for those two blocks. <laughs> Teleporter and ice will send you to the dark side of Mars. What the hell does that mean? Thank you. That, that, thank you. I didn't get that from that. Yes, I want to overwrite it. Yes. Okay, next level. This will probably be the last level for uh, this first part. Yeah. I know, it, I know the game isn't necessarily that long. I just... I figured I'd start, this is a good game to start with, I figured. Fun platforming, too. And I messed that up. <sighs> Damn it! I'll show you what's over here. God damn, this level is big. And that's another robot. I don't know. <laughs> of course, I'm sure I'm going completely opposite of where I'm supposed to be going, but I'm exploring it. I'm sure I haven't run into a damn door yet, though, so... Oh. Okay, 
Obviously, I have no idea what that even entails in that game yet. Because he's awesome. <laughs> Clearly. God, oh god, I'm sure I... Phew! That was, um, that was close. That was, uh, actually very, very close. Here and then, but if I, oh god, here he is. Okay. I assume you can't walk on either side of that crap. Jesus. Oh, I found the exit. Well, that's fine. I was just afraid of, uh. Ah! And there you go. Okay, we're going to save right here. And that's going to wrap up this first episode of DOS Time. I will check you guys later. I hope you enjoyed.